here in module number six, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tax ramifications of second homes or vacation properties. We're going to throw in investment properties because I know somebody in here has already asked me this question, so we'll throw this in here as well. Now, I want to start with the very bottom line on this slide. If you look up on the screen, you will notice that says, please seek an accountant's advice. I am not a practicing CPA nor a practicing attorney. So these are, should be checked and verified, and you probably should tell your client, hey, you need to seek an, a, an accountant. But I can tell you that I'm probably 95% right, and that's almost 100% certain, all right? <laughs> all right, so let's talk a little bit about the bad word taxes and how taxes are applied to the capital gain on all vacation and second homes. Now, so if a client has a second home or a vacation property and they want to sell it, there's always this questions that pop up. So let's go through a little common concepts here and understand. First of all, there's a thing called a 1031 tax exchange. A 1031 tax exchange allows a person to exchange an investment property for an investment property. That is called a like-kind exchange, all right? A lot of people get confused and they assume it has to be a strip center for a strip center. That is not true. Could be a strip center for an apartment building. Those are both investment grade property. But what both of those are not is a property a person lives in. And the IRS defines an investment property differently than they would a secondary home. And I put the quote up there. It says the IRS defines a second home as a property you live in more than 14 days a year or 10% of the total days you rent it out. So if you rent out your vacation property 30 days a year and you live in it more than three days, it is considered a second home. It's not an investment property. Now, if you bought a second property down in one of those vacation home counties that we mentioned and you rent it out the entire year, certainly it is an investment property. But if you rent it out like through Airbnb a couple weekends a year, but then you utilize it over the summer to live in, that is a residence for you and that is not subject to a 1031 exchange it would be a sale of a residence, all right? The second thing that the IRS claims is that you must pay capital gains on the profit of any asset that you sell, all right? Now, they have this thing called the home sale gain exclusion. This is the one that most of you are familiar with. If a person lives in a residence more than two out of the last five years and they are single, their first $250,000 of capital gains is tax-free. If they are married, it's their first $500,000 of capital gains is tax-free. That is what the IRS calls the home sale gain exclusion. It is an exclusion to the rule. The rule says, as I mentioned earlier, that you will pay capital gains tax on the sale of any asset. So when you sell your second home, it is not subject to the home sale gain exclusion. What I'm saying here is you will pay taxes on all of the capital gains of a vacation property, a second property, and there is no de minimis level. If there is a sale and a net gain of $1, there will be taxes paid on that sale. So there could be huge ramifications to selling a second home. And once again, I want to defer back to my uh, terms of agreement statement. I'm not an accountant. Make sure they verify it, but it's, that's correct. All right. I want them to talk to a, an accountant if they get to that point. So what you've got so far is the 1031 they can't use and the home sale gain exclusion they cannot use. 
when they go to sell the property, they will pay capital gains on the, uh, I'm sorry, they will pay taxes on the capital gains. Now, is that taxes short-term capital gains or long-term capital gains? Typically, the IRS defends, uh, tells about the time frame. Short-term usually is less than one year, and anything more than one year is a long-term capital gain. Now, a short-term capital gain would be taxed at what we call ordinary income. On the screen, if you look up there, you'll see OI. That's ordinary income. So whatever your tax rate is this year, based upon your income, that's what they would be taxed at on the sale of their property if they held it for one year or less. If they are holding it longer than one year, it would be taxed at a long-term capital gain. And in 2021, those are 0%, 15%, 20%, depending on the ordinary income that that person's earning. Very convoluted, and once again, you should check with your CPA for the exact numbers. Now, that this could cause a problem in the sale. So if someone has a large capital gain and they have to pay taxes on it, that could be a deciding factor as to whether they sell or not. Specifically, in if they're in that time frame of, well, we've held it nine months or 10 months, we sell it today, it may be ordinary income, taxed as ordinary income, where if I wait two or three more months and get over that threshold and into a long-term capital gain, I may pay less taxes on it. So keep that in mind for you that are listing vacation properties that they may want to talk to, an, and I say may, they should talk to a CPA on that because they are going to pay capital gains, or I keep saying that and I apologize, they're going to pay taxes on their capital gains any amount, all right? So that's important to understand that your clients may be subjected to taxation of a capital gains tax, all right? So let's hold on.